You can all settle down now, boys. It's back. Dana White's Contender Series Season 8 is set to kick off this upcoming Tuesday. I know I've personally been craving some DWCS action. I've had this marked down on my calendar for quite a while. I've really fallen in love with this show. Going into Season 8, it's now more established than ever. We understand the importance of this show. It funnels in all the top-level talent into the UFC. Growing up as a major sports fan in general, a big football fan, baseball fan, I mean, you name it, all the top sports, basketball, everything. I've always really fallen in love with following young prospects working their way into the big league, uh, specifically with football. I love watching college football. I love diving into the draft. That's essentially what this is uh, for our sport, for the sport of MMA. Okay, these are the, the first round picks. These are the second round picks. This is the draft, essentially. They have to perform on this show. They get that UFC contract, and then they eventually try to work their way to the top uh, of the rankings. They eventually try to fight for gold. We've seen some fighters work their way towards the title, like Sean O'Malley. Okay, I mean, this show is, is just awesome, and I'm super excited for it. So I'm trying to calm myself down here a little bit. Uh, I had to... Uh, re-record this this intro a little bit because i was jumping off my seat a couple times as i was doing the intro here but i am very pumped for this season i'll let you guys know right off the rip we are going to have action every week so if you want to work with me for my official plays i'm going to have at least one official play locked in for every week take note of that i am deep diving into all these fighters week to week so you guys will get a lot from these videos here okay if you guys are huge fans of this show as well, you're going to want to make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you guys can catch the weekly content I have coming out to you guys for each of these cards. Please like this video. It means a lot to me. It lets me know that you guys like this, this type of content and I will continue to deliver. Please take a second to go follow me on my social media. I got my IG and my Twitter posted right below me. I will have a lot of content in regard to DWCS there as well. Now, unfortunately, we did lose one of the bouts on this week one episode. It was a welterweight matchup between Meng Deng, who was representing China. Uh, he was set to be facing off with Islam Dolatov, who represents Germany. It was uh, Deng that had to withdraw from the fight. Hopefully, they will reschedule that on this season. Maybe we'll get a, a six-fight uh, card on, on one of these episodes or something like that. But we still have four very fire fights on this fight card. Uh, I'm very intrigued with this flyweight matchup. You guys know I love my flyweight action. I think that uh, An Ho and Lonar Kavanaugh are two of the uh, brightest prospects working their way up in this division. So the winner of this is going to have some real momentum. Uh, I, I won't go on too much. I mean, I can, I can start diving into these fights right now. I want to give you guys a quick PSA before we dive into this season. I want you guys to take note, especially for you beginner uh, MMA betters, right? Or you beginning sports betters, or even if you're just a little green out there, even if you've been doing this for a while, it's still, uh, this is a solid reminder. I truly believe that this, this show when it comes to betting on it, you need to be careful if you're targeting the favorites. You cannot go out here week to week just throwing and smashing your action down on all these favorites because it really will catch you, okay? You have to understand that these fighters are a little bit more green. They're not as established. So even though signs may be pointing for one fighter uh, to get the better of the other, he may be better look, looking better on tape and whatnot, there's not a lot of, uh, of tape to break down on these fighters first and foremost. There's a limited amount of tape. Uh, they're not as established. They don't have as much experience to go off of. And as we saw last season, we can really see some of these underdogs come in and bite you on the ass there, okay? So I want to let you guys know that right off the rip. I'm specifically very intrigued for the first fight of the card, uh, coincidentally, a flyweight matchup between two of the brightest prospects in this division. Uh, we got a matchup between An Ho taking on Loner Kavanaugh. Both fighters 6 0 undefeated and looking to be very promising. I'm also very intrigued uh, with Mansur Abdul Malik, who's undefeated. He's taking on West Schultz in the main event. Now, stop everything you're doing. I'm telling you this to help you, okay? Listen up, guys. Before we officially dive into season eight, I want to tell you from experience. You have to be careful slamming these favorites week to week. Okay, this goes for you you new MMA betters or some of you new or more green sports betters. Be very careful if you're smashing the favorites week to week and if you're betting on every fight. As we saw last season, once again, with this series, 
Okay, these these favorites that come in, they may look a little better on tape. They may look to be the better fighter, but we have limited amount of tape to break down these fighters. They have less amount of, of fights under their belt. Okay, so there's there's a smaller amount of, of track record to go off of. And you see these underdogs come in and spoil the party. Okay, you see some of these huge favorites, minus 500, minus minus four, five, 600, come in and, and get upset. So I just want to caution you guys, if you're betting every fight for you degenerates out there that are slamming these favorites every fight, I want to save you guys some money. So I wanted to say, say that before we dive into the season. Yes, some of the favorites are going to go out there and, and absolutely outclass some of these underdogs uh, as there, there, there will definitely be some mismatches fight to fight. But one thing I've noticed season to season is there is probably more value betting on every underdog. If you just bet every underdog throughout the entire season, you most likely will profit. With that all being said, we're good to go. Just note, we are powered by BetUS. Sign up through the link in the description of this video. Get a 125% match on your first three deposits. No other sports books are giving those type of deposit match bonuses. All right, guys, and let me know if you do that so I can give you an additional gift. All right, let's go jump into this first fight. <laughs> The teller, the teller, the teller. So make no mistake about it. This fight was specifically targeted to be the first fight of this season. Okay, not just of the card, of the season. This is going to dictate the energy and pace for all the fights to follow. All right, so if you're wondering why one of the more anticipated matchups like this is the first fight of the card and why isn't it a main event or a co-main co event slot on an event. Um, it's because it's going to set the tone and energy for this season. This is a fight that's going to be absolutely electrifying. We got on ho taking on loner Kavanaugh in the flyweight division, two of the brighter or two of the brightest prospects outside of the UFC looking to work their way uh, and establish themselves in this division. Both very young. Now, Anho, just 23 years old, training out of the MMA lab. He's a fighter that a lot of people have been paying attention to uh, for a while. Uh, Loner Kavanaugh, training out of Great Britain, top team. A very polished fighter for a 25-year-old, if you ask me. Now, both fighters are 6-0, but they do have a, a decent amount of amateur experience as well, so take note of that. Uh, Anho... If I were to give him a comparison to a UFC fighter, take it easy on me because it's not the best comparison, but there's a little bit of some Brandon Royval vibes coming from him, but I do believe that he carries a little bit more power, uh, but he is he's willing to throw some wild stuff at you on the feet. He's not overly concerned with falling to his back. Okay, he feels confident in his grappling, uh, but that's one thing that I'm not crazy about seeing from him. I really don't like to see fighters... Uh, falling to their back at all now he has high level grappling he'll, he'll work his way back up to his feet or he'll scramble he'll he'll reverse you so don't think that he's just like a low level grappler he has skills there but i, I just don't like the fact that i've seen him on his back uh, quite a bit for the limited amount of tape uh, that there is out there for him well on the other hand uh kavanaugh is a fighter that is uh you know stuff to take down first and then look to implement his striking and he's looked really good with stuffing the takedown in my opinion when when dudes are shooting on him i mean he is just always in position to to stuff that and then just start working his combinations on the feet he's a more fundamentally sound fighter if you ask me now when it comes to his striking uh, ironically enough i get nathaniel wood vibes uh, really his overall game kind of reminds me of nathaniel wood and i believe he trains with nathaniel wood over at uh great britain top team uh you got brad pickett over there coaching nowadays i believe uh fighters like mark dia casey over there and uh, even though he's representing china uh he does train out of great britain not exactly sure what the deal with that is maybe he moved over there when he was young if anyone can elaborate there but uh, he is a high level fighter and i do favor his striking over on ho uh just with the volume that he'll put in and just being a little bit more fundamentally sound with that being said he has shown on tape to have these little uh, mental lapses on the feet where he gets tagged with the big shot maybe he's just uh, a little bit overzealous on the feet kind of pressing and we've seen him clipped and dropped but he does rebound nicely you'll see him uh scramble uh, right back up if he's dropped and uh he'll get right back into his uh his offensive position and start to land uh, his strikes once again so he's he's shown to be durable he's young he's tough obviously he has a lot more mileage left on uh, on the car here i mean this dude is he's a brand new car he's right off the lot so uh i'm not overly concerned with him getting caught with that knockout shot especially in this division but I wouldn't necessarily be completely shocked if on ho lands a strike that shakes things up and he can kind of 
take control of this fight. All right, so I'm leaning towards Kavanaugh's way. I think that he should get the better of those striking exchanges, but just note, Anho is very dangerous in his own right, and he'll look to land something big in this fight that can try to, where he can try to take over the fight and kind of shake things up, okay? Um, all in all, though, I, I will take Lonar Kavanaugh to get the job done here. I just think that he's shown to be just a little bit more of a complete fighter, a little bit more fundamentally sound fighter. He's the safer pick here. Kavanaugh is a big favorite. He's a minus 260 currently. I do not like that line. Okay, the comeback on Ho is plus 210. I think there is more value on the whole line. This is a fight that's going to be wild. There's going to be a lot of opportunities for, for something to happen that shakes this fight up. Okay, they're, they're going to be exchanging. Like I said, don't be shocked if Ho lands a very damaging strike that can, can steal a round or maybe he gets a knockout. And it's just, it's really hard to say how this fight is going to play out. I, I just, I have it a lot closer than the minus 260 line on Kavanaugh. Okay, I understand he looks very good. He's a very promising prospect, but so is on Ho. Okay, and he is a very motivated fighter. I just saw a couple of interviews with him. He's been very patient. He, he's happy that he hasn't had this opportunity in the past. He thinks now is the right time. He's been preparing for this moment. And at plus 210, I believe the vet, the betting value is on the underdog here. I will say that Kavanaugh wins a decision, plays out somewhat close, maybe a unanimous decision where Ho takes one round 29 to 28 for Kavanaugh. Uh, but not in favor of that high line. Remember what I told you guys in the intro here. Be careful if you're just slamming all these favorites. There's going to be some dogs that upset your party. And Ho may, may be one of them. In the featherweight division, we have another heavy favorite. In fact, the line is very similar to the last line we just talked about. Maybe a little bit more warranted in this case. We have a Carl Brito representing the fighting nerds uh, he's taking on ernie Juarez, who's representing uh stockton uh he's a gracie fighter uh fighting out of the 209 uh he's undefeated 8-0 has some professional boxing experience as well now uh, i want to talk about a carl brito here for a second though uh this is a dude that that really looks promising in my opinion uh, he's a very highly regarded prospect coming out of the mma fighting nerds we know that gym has been delivering non-stop it's been delivering when they have fighters fighting on the show, you see fighters come through that show, get contracts, come into the UFC and win fights. In fact, I think that the MMA, uh, the, the, the fighting nerds, uh, their, their recent record in the octagon is like undefeated. I may be wrong there, man, but those guys have just been winning every time that they're in the cage. When you mix up uh, Kyle Bahilo, uh, you got Ruffy. Uh, of course, you have Gene Silva. I mean, the, the list goes on. I think that Brito may be a fighter that, that adds to the accolades of that gym. I mean, this dude looks electrifying in there. Maybe electrifying is not the best way to describe him. He's not a fighter that puts a very high output on the feet. He looks to land that one damaging shot, but when he does land it, he finishes you, man. He lands, he has some serious power, and I think that he's going to prove to be a solid fighter. I'm a little bit curious to see how his grappling game will look, especially later in fights. He doesn't have an overwhelming amount of late round experience. Uh, Juarez is not uh, the, the, the worst grappler. I would say he's more of a boxing base fighter first and foremost, but has uh, some grappling abilities as well. He's a little bit more of a, a slow and plotty type of fighter. When, when you're watching him, he's kind of plotting forward and uh, kind of just throwing out his boxing uh, I'm going to say it's slow motion. I don't want to be disrespectful, but I do think there is a, a very big uh, difference in, in the speed. I expect Brito to be much quicker uh, when, when he's looking to land his shot compared to uh, Juarez. Maybe Juarez can overwhelm him with volume and, and a dog fight when, when the fight goes to the later rounds or if it goes to the later rounds, that could be a potential avenue for victory for Ernie Juarez. Um, but all in all, let me cut to the chase here. I think that Brito shows to be the much more promising prospect he, he just looks a lot more exciting when you're breaking down tape on him um you just you mix up the overall recipe and i, I could see brito landing some big shots here on the feet uh juarez is there to be hit okay in one of his professional boxing fights he was knocked out and even in his mma fights as he's kind of the aggressor walking forward he he leads with his head a little bit he's there to be touched and i have a feeling that brito can hurt him in this fight so uh, i'm going to say that a car brito actually gets a knockout in this fight so, uh, I mean, we'll see how that plays out. I think that he lands a damaging shot that, that shakes things up. When we're talking about the betting line, uh, Brito is currently a minus 270. Uh, the comeback on Juarez right around plus 220. 
Uh, would have been nice if he was a plus 209 there. Represent Stockton. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't think that this line is that crazy. If you want to reach for a favorite here, I just my gut is telling me that Brito is going to be one of those favorites that really goes out there and looks good. Uh, of course, though, we do have question marks. Doesn't have an overwhelming amount of pro experience. Doesn't have a lot of late run experience, as we talked about. Maybe Juarez can expose him. Uh, Juarez has been putting in some work uh, fighting under uh, Uriah Faber's uh, fight promotion out there in California. Uh, you know, Both these guys haven't fought the highest level of competition, I would say. But all in all, as I break down the tape, I think that Brito is going to land some big strikes in this fight that's really going to set the tone of this fight. He's either going to get that knockout or he's just going to be the fighter that, that's taking over and hurting Juarez. And Juarez may prove to be tough and continue to march forward, but uh, at, at that point, I just don't see Juarez winning the rounds as he's hurt and he's getting landed on big. And uh, when it comes to the ground game, I'm curious to see how that plays out if it goes down there. Maybe Juarez tries to push with the wrestling, but I have a feeling that Brito's grappling and his BJJ will be just fine as you know that he trains with some high-level grapplers. Uh, Kyle Bahilo being one of the, the leading uh, fighters of the pack over there that represents the ground game there not a lot of submission victories for kyle but very fundamentally sound and uh, using that the, the bjj to to hold the zone down there so give me a carl brito to keep this fight standing and land a devastating strike in the fight bruno lopez is looking for some redemption on the show and his last opportunity on dwcs he was knocked out in the first round by a fighter that he probably defeats 90 out of 100 times and uh brendan brendanson robero a uh, robero a low level fighter but somewhat dangerous on defeat if you get caught up in his game uh bruno lopez obviously uh, had a learning lesson there he since bounced back with a victory had an arm triangle choke uh, over marcus uh bragago uh bruno lopez an, an lfa champion uh fighter that has a big victory over uh gregory rodriguez back in the day although i mean gregory rodriguez was just a kid at the time that's a very fun fight that's on youtube you could pull that up uh, he's now taking on mikhail uh, says hiniani who is a georgian wrestler okay this is a dude that comes in a little pudgy uh looks to push the pace with his wrestling that that's his real trait his real skill that he brings into the octagon i would say is his wrestling if you're lacking there He'll, he'll time entries pretty well. He'll put you on your back. But I would say that his BJJ is not that good. And even if he does get a takedown on Bruno Lopez, I think that Bruno Lopez will be fine there because he has the BJJ skills to eventually reverse him or work his way back up and then uh, take over this fight. Uh, Mikael striking... Uh, I think I just said it, but I'll say it again. Not impressed with his striking, to say the least. Now, Bruno Lopez is a more polished striker, and he should get the better of those exchanges. And if someone were to get a knockout, I would say it would be more likely uh, Lopez that lands that big shot. Uh, if you remember uh, the Gregory Rodriguez knockout, he really... Uh, timed, uh, I think it was an overhand right, he kind of timed that nice in the pocket as they were trading. I could see him landing some type of strike like that. But it is worth noting that Lopez, even though he's technically sound with his striking, he moves very slowly. That's one thing that's, that stood out to me right off the rip since I've been breaking down tape on him, even back from, from his last fight when we were breaking down tape on, take, tape on him there. He is a fighter that moves very slowly. So um, th this fight could actually play out pretty sloppily on the feet, if you ask me. If Lopez isn't on his P's and Q's and doesn't land some solid shots there, like let's say this fight goes to the later rounds, I think this fight could look very ugly now, as both men are kind of sloppily just just trading with each other. But even then, I would say that the accuracy of Lopez and the, the technical abilities he has there will be a little bit of a step or a good amount of a step over Mikael there. Um, the one thing that you're going to worry about if you're targeting Lopez here is if Mikael has continued success with his takedowns or if he somehow... Uh, has a better, better gas tank than Lopez. But that's a big question mark too, because even though he has the wrestling skills, I haven't been the biggest fan of his cardio and his fights. And ironically enough, his physique may, may hint at why his cardio is not the best. But uh, since that loss that he took against uh, Murtaza Talha, who was a fighter that was in a main event slot on Dana White's contender series last season. In fact, he was a big favorite. He got, uh, he, he was upset, right? He was finished uh, by actually a, a very underrated fighter a uh, fighter that, that is he's looking good man rodolfo Bellato. you know Bellato's tough as nails Bellato pulled the upset off on talha just note that talha is still a a high level prospect and since that loss 
Mikael has went on a one, two, three, four, five, six fight winning streak. Uh, he's getting some finishes, even some finishes on the feet. But I want to note once again, I'm not not high on his striking ability. I think that Bruno Lopez will be the more polished fighter. He just needs to stuff takedowns and work his BJJ and get the better of those striking exchanges. When it comes to the betting line, Bruno Lopez right now is a minus 230 favorite. The comeback on Mikael is plus 190. Uh, I know minus 230 is another high line, but maybe not as bad as some of the lines that we will see throughout this season, right? Well, we'll see our minus 400, minus 500s, and even some of the other lines we talked about earlier uh, were a little higher than that. So it's not necessarily unreachable if you really want to have action on this fight. I do expect Lopez to be the better fighter. Um, I, I just, I don't know if Mikael is going to be able to grind him out with his wrestling, especially with the platform of this show. You guys know how it is. We want exciting fights. Dana wants exciting fights. So it's going to be really hard for Mikael to just kind of take him down and, and lay on him with that sloppy little pitter-patter ground and pound. And I, I, even then, I think that Lopez would work his way back up to his feet and has solid jiu-jitsu to reverse him or whatnot. It's not an unreachable line. Um, I'll say that Bruno Lopez gets a, a submission victory here. I'm going to say that he gets a second or third round submission victory, um, but we'll see how this fight plays out. Michael Vick here at BetUS.com. Get it all. Huge bonuses, great odds, a race book, live in-game betting, and a casino. BetUS, my online sports book and casino. Here we go. We have the headliner. We have one of the brightest prospects of this season. Set the headline this first episode here in Mansur Abdul Malik. He's undefeated. He's 5-0. and oh. He's taken on Wes Schultz. Now, these fighters are, are polar opposites in one way. And that's the fact that Mansur Abdul Malik has potential to become a UFC champion. Okay? And for those of you guys that are more grounded and you're saying, hey, pump the brakes. He's only 5-0. and oh, Hasn't fought anybody yet. I understand that. I'm just saying he has the potential. There's a very high ceiling for him. While on the other hand, Wesley Schultz has a very low ceiling. If he's lucky, he starts to figure things out and could potentially become a fighter that fights a little bit in the UFC. Maybe he establishes himself as a, as a journeyman in the octagon. I mean, th this is a dude that's already went out there and has taken a loss uh, to Dylan Bucca, right? That was just four fights ago. It was a year and a half ago. He lost to Dylan Bucca. That kind of sets your ceiling pretty low when you're losing to a dude like Dylan Bucca. I know he bounced back with three victories in a row, uh, but he's 28 years old. He's not extremely young. He still has time to, to, to improve for sure, but I think the ceiling is a, a lot lower on a Wes Schultz. Um, there is an avenue to victory here, though. I will say that, uh, but l let's talk about this big prospect and Manor uh, Abdul, or Monster Abdul uh, Malik. This is a dude, he's a career mixed martial artist, first off, if you didn't know that. Okay, forget about the fact that uh, he wrestled collegiately, right? He, he got involved in wrestling, which is obviously a major uh, feather in your cap there to have that, uh, you know, that, that base there. But he's a career mixed martial artist. He got involved with a lot of traditional martial arts. I think that's, that's a very good thing for him there. He's a, a freak athlete, uh, an 80-inch wingspan. So he has those, those natural tools as well that he brings into the cage. Big knockout power. Um, he, he just, he has a lot of intangibles that he brings in. That's why he's set a, as a very, uh, hot prospect right now. Okay. Um, I think that he's going to be very live to get a knockout over Wes Schultz. Wes Schultz is very sloppy with his striking. Uh, he'll look to throw spinning attacks. He's sloppy, slow st spinning attacks, and, um, he's willing to engage in a brawl. He'll throw these loopy type of shots, uh, I have seen Mansur Abdul Malik get hit with some ugly shots before. If you want to talk about his professional debut, which give the guy a break. It was his pro debut. He was fighting a very low level level fighter in Cole Jordan, and he eventually got the first round knockout. Anyway, you could pull that fight up on YouTube. He did eat a, a pretty big shot in that fight. At one point in time, he was actually staggered a little bit, but quickly resorted to his wrestling, um, you know, to to kind of control the fight there for a little bit, and then eventually got the knockout too. So, um, just a learning experience for him. Since that fight, goes on to get uh, four first round knockouts in a row. Now, what do you think the avenue uh, for victory is as far as Wesley Schultz goes? It's it's glaring, right? It's the fact that Mansur Abdul Malik doesn't have a lot of cage time. His fights are ending very quickly. And I will note, Wesley Schultz, he has a wrestling background as well. So he has a grappling background. Uh, another 
uh, fighter, or I would compare him to Mansour Abdul Malik. I believe both fighters, lower level collegiate wrestling uh, experience, not really wrestling at big Division One schools, I do believe. But still, it's solid. It's solid to have that wrestling background. Uh, one thing I do like about Schultz is that he's been working the BJJ in with the wrestling pretty well down in the mat. I see him taking dudes backs. Uh, his BJJ is evolving, and if he could possibly drag this fight into the later rounds. Maybe you see him snatching up a back, locking up a body triangle or something like that. And maybe we see Mansur Abdul Malik get completely exhausted in the later rounds and he gets rear naked choked or he gets flattened out and TKO'd. That's the avenue of victory for Wesley Schultz. But I want to be very clear. I think that it's not very likely to happen. Monster Abdul Malik is just a polished fighter. He's a very well-rounded fighter. I think he's going to have the takedown defense to to sprawl and brawl. Or maybe brawl is not even the right the right word. Sprawl and set up that 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 big knockout shot. You know he he'll snipe him out, and I, I see that happening. I, I do see that happening. I, I really like Monster Abdul Malik, and I think that he's going to establish himself as a legitimate fighter in the UFC. We'll see how far he can push it. Give me Monster Abdul Malik to get. A first round knockout. I think that there's going to be a lot of energy going into this fight, uh, the headliner, and I, I just don't see. I, it's going to be hard for West Schultz to slow the pace down too. We talked about the atmosphere of this event. There's going to be a high energy going into the main event. They need to deliver. I think West Schultz is going to get sucked right in to that situation where he's going to look to trade a little bit, or he's going to be forced to trade. And Mansur Abdul Malik is going to knock him out. That's what's going to happen here, Mansur. Mansur Abdul Malik is going to get that knockout. The tongue's going to be out. He's going to be going wild. Mansur is a minus 380. He's the biggest favorite of the night, and I would say it's warranted. All right, I know it's it's a it's a bit of a reach where the line's at a minus three eighty. He'll probably close as like a minus four fifty. Who knows? He may even close as a minus five hundred. We have a lot of time till this fight takes place. You may be able to grab West Schultz at like plus three eighty, which you could try to argue there's some value there because if you can get it to the later rounds, but I would still steer you away from from targeting the dog here. I just think that Malik is going to shine. Now he's been training over at MMA Masters. I know that he's associated with fighters like Colby Covington, Sean Strickland. You see Sean Strickland commenting over here. There's a lot of big name fighters that follow him and I think that they're they're kind of on to the potential that he has. And MMA, MMA Masters is an underrated gym. He's getting fine tuned over there. So I would still say as high as this line is, I I like him as maybe a, a potential parlay piece and a two legger or even if we could target him to get the knockout here, if we can get a decent line on Mansur Abdul Malik to get that knockout, I think there may be some value there. Keep an eye on this fighter. This video is brought to you by BetUS Sportsbook and Casino. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up Dana White's Contender Series Season 8, Episode 1. You guys can expect to see me here on the mic breaking down every single Dana White's Contender Series fight card throughout this entire season. And moving forward, of course, season to season. So I, I appreciate you guys. Please like this video. Subscribe if you like what you saw here. And if you want more DWCX action coming at you. You all have a great week. Signing out. Teller. The Teller. The Teller. The Teller. The teller.